four, three, two, one. Here we go. Hi, this is John Bennett of InternetMedicine.com, broadcasting from Miami. Tonight, uh, I have the pleasure of having Alex Grill, Grill, Grilly and Ro, Rahul. I'm sorry, I don't get your last name, Rahul. No, it's Rahul Shah. Okay, Rahul Shah. They're here tonight uh, to, to explain their uh, application. Uh, it's a secure HIPAA compliant application, hippomsg.com. Um, basically, we're going to structure this. I'm going to ask a few general questions, and then they're going to take the floor. And tweeters, you're welcome to tweet questions at any time or comments. And I'll interrupt uh, Alex and Rahul at the appropriate time so they can answer your questions. So, okay, welcome, gentlemen. Thanks, John. Thank you. Okay, just a few general questions before you start, uh, and may, you may address them during your presentation. You don't have to stop now. And, but uh, the whole issue of HIPAA compliancy, you know, I'm like most physicians probably. I don't understand the details of it and why it's so darn important, etc. I know I can't violate it, but I kind of don't know the particulars. And during your presentation, uh, maybe you have planned to address that uh, question, but I, I, I wish you would. And uh, uh, well, just basically uh, the importance of this type of thing in uh, American medicine today. So take it away, Alex and Rahul. It's all yours. Alex, why don't you just go ahead and start with that, the problem. It's been very intimate to your practice. Maybe share your story, and then we can talk a little bit about that. Right. So, you know, John, the, the importance of patient privacy has really come to the forefront um, in the past 10 to 15 years, and even more so now in the digital age, you know, the age of digital communication, email, text messaging. All this patient information is just kind of flying around through the air. And the government has stepped in in a role to really try to protect um, patient privacy. And so HIPAA laws are designed in order to do just that, to prevent healthcare providers from disclosing personal patient information to people who are not directly involved in that patient's care. And, and what's, what's amazing, uh, John, is how any practice is vulnerable. We always say, well, they can't affect me, they can't touch me. Alex has an example from his own practice. Some of my friends' practices have been fined, and once it hits home and the financial impact gets you, it's, it's pretty profound. Alex, would you mind sharing your story? Yeah, at our hospital, there was a lost laptop that had um, patient research information, and that resulted in a large government fine, $1.5 million to the hospital, you know, paid by the hospital and the medical practice. So, um, you know, that is something, you know, that I saw personally and, um, you know, that affected me and all of my colleagues. So, you know, there's, um, there's fallout from that that we're still dealing with. Um, so the government has really stepped up and really is now enforcing these breaches, enforcing, um, you know, violations of these breaches uh, in a big way. It's also interesting, John, um, being an emergency room physician, if, if you're seeing a patient of mine in the emergency room or I've referred a patient there, I'd love to be able to chat with you but it's sometimes hard to find one another. I'm sure many times you want to chat with your referring doctors, but how do you find them? Well, you know their back line. Everybody knows you. They'll, they're happy to take a call from Dr. Bennett, but you just might not get through that front person. You might not get through to that back line. I might be doing a procedure. So HIPPO message allows online messaging. If you see a patient in the emergency room and you want to shoot me a line, hey, Rahul, I just drained a peritonsillar abscess. I'm going to have them follow with you in two days. That's perfect. When I'm done with my patient visit, I can then reply back, thanks, John. I'll see you next time I'm in the emergency room. But right now, we don't do that. Right now, you take care of the patient, and you send them home with discharge instructions. They come back to my office a few days later, and I say, I wonder what Dr. Bennett did. And it's not because you and I don't care. We don't have a platform. There's no platform out there. So the competitors, which are very uh, big competitors, go after the enterprise. They want the hospital to have a system for secure messaging. That's great, but how about the rest of us? We all work at many hospitals. We all call on many different emergency rooms and different practices. So Hippo Message allows us to interconnect and go one-to-one -one putting the patient first. I don't know if you have personal examples of that, Dr. Bennett, but I'm, I'm sure you do where you want to talk to your uh, colleagues. Oh, I, I can't tell you, Raul, how many hours I spent some days waiting for uh, physicians to answer. 
uh, and it puts everyone in, in a tight spot. Patient, nurses, the families of the patients. Uh, uh, there's certainly lots of delays in the emergency room. I wish when I practice uh, full time, I wish I had something like this because I can't tell you. So it's a kind of a standalone alone application, doctor to doctor, correct? Mainly well, inter. It's more than that, John. Actually, it's we. Re one of the things Rahul and I realized was that most of the communication in medicine is not doctor to doctor. Doctor to doctor communication is very important, but most of it deals with physicians communicating with nurses and support staff. So with our app, not only can it be used by a doctor who's in the emergency room or um, you know somewhere with his smartphone, but it can also be used on the desktop. So if you're a secretary or a nurse who's working with you is at a computer, they can message you that way, they can message each other, so it really is meant to um, join all healthcare providers. We actually have 29 different user types. We have audiologists, lactation consultants, nurses, doctors, PAs, we have, um, we've tried to cover every person that deals with patient information. And that's interesting, John, when other uh, companies are out there, they started physician to physician, and we realized right away they got it wrong because only about 5% of healthcare communications, physician to physician, you would have your PA or NP or nurse reach out to me and I need to accept that call and take care of it. So in a confidential manner, we can all speak. I don't need to know your cell phone. I don't need to know your email. I just need to know that John Bennett is in Miami as an emergency room physician and we can communicate. So it's every day people use our cell phones and email. So I don't want to be giving that out to the whole world and Hippo Message keeps that confidential while allowing communication. Well, you know, just what you gentlemen just said about it's more than doctor to doctor. You, that's already just, I had the illusion that that's what it was. Uh, I think most people hear about this, the HIPAA compliance, etc. They think, like me, that it's, oh, that just covers doctor to doctor, but it's, in fact, healthcare worker to doctor, correct? Exactly, exactly. And healthcare worker to healthcare worker. You know, if we have um, a physical therapist who wants to talk to a podiatrist or an orthopedic surgeon about a patient, they can do that. They can connect, you know, healthcare, we make it patient centric. That's our main message is to be, to put the patient at the center of what we do and make them the hub of all this communication. You know, what's interesting, John, is we didn't start out with 29 user types. We honestly started out with five or six, and that was our myopic vision. But people come to us. We have optometrists that reach out to us, physical therapists, occupational therapists, lactation consultants, and we didn't realize how big the network is. And we're very proud that when a new group comes to us, we're able to get them online within weeks. And that's a great way to ensure that we all communicate for free about our patients. Well, does it does it cover doctor to patient uh, types of communication, or that's a totally totally different uh, ball game? Is that possible or not yet? It's on the horizon. It's possible, but it's definitely a whole new ball game. It involves different different laws, different authentication of who's who, and and you know, with providers, there are many different ways for us to find out if someone says who they really are. With patients, that becomes you know an order of magnitude more difficult. There are other, there are many other considerations. You know, it's not impossible, but our goal right now is to modernize communication between providers to help patients. Well, it's, it's certainly leading. Now, how long you guys met uh, during residency? You guys did residency together. So I'm subservient a little bit, John. If you didn't notice, Alex was my chief resident when I was a two, so I'm a little bit deferential, even 20 years later. <laughs> Okay, I won't. I won't go into the financial aspects of that uh, partnership. Uh, but so you guys, I, I, I read a little bit on your website. It was a serendipitous type of start. Uh, you were on a call and you saw the difficulty that people were having. So you thought to yourself, "Hey, we got to do something about this." Had you guys had any computer background, programming background, and knew that there was some kind of way you could create this? No, we didn't. We're uh, you know we're just two simple country doctors, and we, you know, we didn't. Neither of us has a programming background, and you know that was one of the main challenges. You know, really the challenge with this communication, there are two things. The first is that we wanted to modernize. So you know, people are used to text messaging and emailing at this point. You know, 
trying to page someone and waiting for them to call you back and then missing the call and needing to call them back, that, that really creates a problem and, and a disconnect between the two providers. You know, nowadays someone will send someone a text message, go off and do something and then get a message back and reply in kind. So that's what people are used to. So we wanted to bring that to healthcare. The challenge, of course, is HIPAA because it all has to be encrypted, privatized, and, made, and done in such a way that patient information doesn't get disclosed to the wrong people. And, and you know, building on that experience, Hippo Message is a lean startup, John. Um, we both have full-time jobs, and we take the business model very seriously, and that model is free. We're not here to create a company where the executives and founders go out to fancy dinners and fancy hotels. We want to help our patients. And one of the most gratifying things today, I got a Hippo Message from one of my pediatricians at 10.30 saying, I have a kid with recurrent ear infections. They're set to see you in two weeks. Here's the information. And I said, well, why don't you just send them right over? And she said, are you kidding? I said, absolutely not. And they were in my office by noon. So we don't have the development background, but we have the passion and somewhat of the financial resources to get the consultants together, right? And you know about that. Let's just get the right consultants in the room, and, and we can solve any problem. And we look at this as just getting the right people in the room, uh, the right skill set. The first hire me, we made, John, the first consultant we brought on was a security and compliance officer. Alex and I talked on Super Bowl weekend in February 2012. That Friday, I believe, Alex, we called Gary Pritz, who's a national expert in HIPAA security and compliance. We had several phone calls before we put any money or any time, can we do this? And he said, yes, we can, fellas, but this is what you're going to have to do, A, B, and C. And we've done that to ensure we're the best in class security. So we have a top security and compliance officer. About three months ago, we brought in one of the top HIPAA lawyers to help us with our BAA. And on top of that, we've started security assessments and penetration testing. And basically, John, that's like standing in front of a mirror, paying thousands of dollars to beat yourself up, and then doing it again in three months. Right? So we want to... We wanna test the platform and test it to make sure that we're doing the right thing. So we take the security very seriously. Well, you know, this just this morning I had an interview with uh, Kyle Samurai. He, uh, uh, he's, he had a Google Glass HIPAA compliant uh, glassware, it's called, application. And he had it approved in less than a year. And I asked Kyle, I said, wow, you had this application approved HIPAA compliant in one year. How did you do it? He says, well, I have background working with government agencies uh, because that's a tricky terrain. I'm sure it's for you guys. It's new uh, to most doctors. They wouldn't know that type of terrain. And it's, you're lucky you, you hooked up with someone that kind of knew what to do. Right. We think that, you know, one of the things we know, we know our weaknesses and we have many. So we, um, you know, fill that in with, we try to find the best people in each field. So we've you know, as Rahul said, we're very lean. Um, we don't we hire all consultants. We don't have anyone that we're you know we're, um, we're paying a huge salary to. We're not going out to fancy dinners or anything like that. We're just trying to get what money we have and use it to improve this product. And John, this wouldn't work if we charged providers. I wouldn't pay for it. I, and I'm gonna assume maybe you wouldn't pay for it, but you certainly might try if it's free. And we're confident that if, if we give it out there for free, which it will always be free at some level, that all providers will get on it. And who benefits in the end? The patients plus the provider. You said yourself you spent hours. Well, wouldn't you have loved to have those hours back to see more patients, to get home, to chart, to do your hobbies? Absolutely. So you're getting some pretty big dividends back. And that's why we're committed to keeping it free. Well, you know, what, General, one of the benefits I would see is weekends. Weekends were a horror show working at some suburban e emergency rooms. It was so difficult to get her to get a hold of subspecialists on the weekends. Uh, during the week, it's not easy, but it's certainly the weekends, it's very difficult. And I imagine something like this would, would help very nicely. Have you heard any feedback from docs about that, how it helps on weekends or night times, or just it helps all the time? So I think uh, I, I'm going to interrupt you, Alex. I'm sure you were going to talk, but you know, John, we're colleagues. We take care of patients, and that's probably the most gratifying thing. You and I and Alex can relate to that, and I'm sure many of the listeners. Taking care of patients on a one-to-one -one basis is a lot of fun, but I've never experienced such joy as having pediatricians, having other doctors talk to you and say, 
thank you so much for developing this. This afternoon I spoke to an optometrist from San Antonio, Texas, and she said, this is awesome. She said, I'm a rural practitioner. I cannot afford secure messaging. But now I can get my whole office on board, and I can get my referring physicians on board, and at the end, you're going to help the vision of the patients in this small San Antonio rural town. That was extremely gratifying, John. I'm sure you can relate to that with your endeavor here on Internet Medicine. When you help people on a macro level, it's very fulfilling. We hear tons of stories like this. I don't know, Alex, if you want to shed some more, but we have so many. Yeah, I just think the big picture is that you know, healthcare costs are climbing for practitioners and reimbursements are declining. So when you're in that environment, um, and as well as the government coming down upon people, you know, people are, are really looking forward, look, looking for something just like this, where they're going to have something that's free, secure, and, you know, the government off their back and allow them to communicate about their patients. What, what, what applications were people using before you guys started this texting? Um, yeah, right. well, one of two ways, <laughs> you know. Uh, there are several. We have several competitors who charge a four um, a per user fee per month, um, and some bigger institutions have have adopted that. Or people simply say, you know what, I'm the little guy. No one's going to catch me. I'm just going to text message uh, and do it in a non secure way. Uh, but we right. we know from some of the fines that have been levied that even a, a small five-person group uh, in Arizona, a cardiothoracic group, actually got a hundred thousand dollar fine for um, non-secure transmission of patient information. So even the little guys can't can't get away. Right, right. That's, oh, that's interesting. Now, uh, you, this is on the iTunes, correct? So it's, uh, it's what we've realized, John, is not a lot of hospitals have great Wi-Fi. Some offices don't have mobile setups. And when we first came up with the platform, we, we made sure that it went great on the desktop. And we took mobile as a second look. In the last three months, we've released version two. That was the press release that came out the other day. We hit significant milestones. And we said, you know, this has got to be mobile health optimized. And just for your users out there or the listeners, M Health, right? That's all the rage right now. And so we will tell you, we got it wrong. In the beginning, we focused on the desktop. And then we realized that the tablets, the mobile devices, that's one of the biggest markets. So now it's on both. It's on Apple, the iTunes Store, and the Google Play Store. It's on your desktop. You can use it on, on any platform. And what's interesting, we talk about the security, but it's not just the fear of the regulators that we want to drive home. It's about the efficiency in practice. Let's just think how easy it is to find a colleague around the corner. You know, I see about 40 to 50 patients a day. I dictate a note. By the time that note gets there, if I'm lucky, it's about four to six weeks. By then, I've seen them. I've treated them. I've operated on them. They've probably been to the emergency room with a complication, and nobody knows what happened. That's just not right. We have instant right. communication all over the world, except in healthcare. So we want to transform healthcare communication and make pagers obsolete. It's an audacious goal, but hopefully by doing it free and in a community, we can achieve that. Uh, all right. Is anybody using uh, the beepers anymore? Yes, <laughs> people really? still people still use pagers. It's very common. It's actually uh, one of the most common forms of communication of patient information. Uh, pagers are still very much in use. Um, you know, obviously, this is the same as it was in the 1980s. Nothing really has changed in that regard, and that's really our goal. Is you know, we want to bring medical communication into the digital age and allow the the healthcare community to catch up with the rest of the world. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what we're doing now. We're using, leveraging digital technology to have this idea brought in front of a lot of people. The Hangouts were just, it was just a couple of years old, and it allows me to go to developers like you and explain and bring out in front of people ideas. I, this didn't exist a couple of years ago, and that's, it's a fantastic educational platform when you speak about the advances Harnessing the advances in digitalization. So, um, do you guys have any plans to do anything else, or any other uh, apps or programs, or is this pretty well? You spend all your time doing this. Yeah, you know, between our day jobs and uh, doing this, you know, we really want to focus on our core competency, which is really communication. So, you know, we have other side projects and pet projects that we want to do, but right now, all of our time and effort is spent on this. 
you know, I think, John, once we started taking investor money, we have a real fiduciary duty to the investors to do it right. And, and that means um, not playing games, not doing anything, but having HIPPO message as the sole focus. Uh, the investors see a lot of value in provider-to-provider -provider communication. And as the founders, it's our obligation to deliver on that and get the right product out there. The product that rolled out a few weeks ago is simply fantastic. You know, we were uh, driving a beat-up old car before, and now we have a new fancy car, and, and we're excited for people to try it. We have thousands of practices, John, that are using the platform, and that translates into several thousand more uh, actual users because some practices use one account for their whole front office. So it's pretty exciting. When we look at the market, there's about 8 million to 10 million providers. And we want to get out there to a couple hundred thousand, and that's when you're going to change healthcare and reach a tipping point. And we're, we're starting to get there, and we're pretty excited. So we want to put all our energy, all our efforts into this sole mission. Do you guys find, it, find that younger, more internet smart people are more apt to adopt the platform? They are. They absolutely are. I think it's just part of, uh, you know, their, their generation and their culture. You know, they're just used to... Uh, walking around, looking at their phones, and typing things with their thumbs. So you know, I think it, I think they are more savvy and more likely to adopt it. But you know, uh, we've tried to design it for that reason to be very intuitive, very simple, so that even people who aren't very tech savvy can still use it. Mm -hmm. And it's downloadable from your website, correct? Yeah, the platform is available. It's downloadable from the website. It's also available on. Uh, iTunes and on the Google on Google Play. Alex, I think we want to clarify, uh, Dr. Bennett, you don't need to download it per se. So your users, I don't want to take them away from, from this live feed, but maybe when we're done, they could go to hippomessage.com and they could get started. You can use that from any browser anywhere in the world. I've actually sent Alex hippo messages from the airplane and other countries. And it's from the, the mobile platform. You don't have to download it when you're using your desktop. On your phone, you can have the app and download it, but you can also use the browser on your phone. So we've made it just compatible in every regard. We want to make it absolutely simple, free, and patient-centric so people don't have any excuse not to use it. Very good. Let me just check real quick just to uh, see if we have any questions on the tweet board. Not even Jenny is tweeting. Let me see here. I hope she just tweets to say hello. <laughs> Yeah, so you, you got to thank her. She put all this, all this together. Thanks, Jenny. Thank you, Jenny. We're lucky to have a great team. <laughs> well, okay, gentlemen, we're it's quiet on the tweet board tonight, but that that happens. Uh, I'm just learning this 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 tech, and uh, I've just been doing this for a month. But it's a tremendous way uh, to have ideas like yours be put in front of the community. Um, hopefully a lot of people saw it tonight and can hear about it and can try it. Um, and it does help. I think it puts, for me, it puts a face in front of the technology. It puts both you guys, your face, your personality, you're talking about it. It's a little different than just looking at an application you've never seen before, but when you see the people that actually made the program talking about it, I think that's a, I think that's a good step. And I hope you guys use this video. In your uh, on your website, so stick around. I want to talk to you guys later. I'm an entrepreneur too. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, John. Thank you. Thanks so much, John. Thank you.